Hadir. So if you haven't subscribed, I want you to kindly, you know, subscribe to this channel. And today I want to talk about the situation in Eastern Congo, North Kivu in particular. So, uh, so far I'm getting a lot of images, videos, and intel on what is going on there. There have been heavy fighting in the regions near Masisi, regions in Kirorirwe, which is a town in Masisi, a region in Burungu, which is a town uh, eastern, you know, from as you move away from Masisi towards Niragongo. Also Kibumba, they have been heavy fighting in the past week, and there have been heavy casualties, especially suffered by the Rwandan troops that were fighting in Burungu, near Burungu, and Kibumba. So I'm going to show you the images that were captured of some of these Rwandan uh, trenches, Rwandan troop trenches. Now a lot of people still don't believe that Rwanda is openly sending troops to Congo without hiding. They are not even doing it at night. These troops are crossing the border during the day. There is a lot of people seeing them crossing you know, the border through Virunga National Park. And there are photos to, to back that. And there are you know, today there are drone footage from the Congolese soldiers and, you know, the Kenyan troops that are stationed there. As I am going to show you, the Kenyans are actually using uh, advanced surveillance, using these uh, reconnaissance drones, including these cheap uh, consumer drones like DJI, you know, the DJI Mavic drones. They are also being used to basically uh, take photos and, uh, and videos to confirm the movement of these Rwandan troops. So there's a lot of videos I've seen Rwandan troops crossing into Congo. I've seen them digging trenches. And in one video, as you can see here, they are moving their injured commanders because uh, as you can see, the, this guy they are moving here must be very important to them. So they are moving their commander back to Rwanda to so that he can get specialized treatment. And this is after heavy fighting with the local self-defense groups called uh, Nyatura. These are other, all of them are called Wazarendo, basically uh, in general. Collectively, they are called Wazarendo. In, there you find militias like Nyatura. You find the other ones uh, that Rwanda keeps calling FDRR, though they don't call themselves FDRR. It's Rwanda that labels them that. Of course, in return, they call Rwandans the the enemies. They also call them Inyenzi, whatever. It doesn't matter. So it's Rwanda that calls these guys FDRR. Though they are Congolese, they are not Rwandans. They are not Rwandan rebels. They never had intentions to go to Rwanda before Rwanda, Rwanda went to Congo. As a matter of fact, I want to tell you another thing you need to note is that before twenty, uh, before two thousand and five, before two thousand and five, a lot of Congolese people in the east, that is in Kivu, had never seen a gun or rather owned an AK forty seven. They never knew where bullets come from. They used to see them with the government soldiers and um, police officers, but a lot of people had never seen a real gun. So like having it in their own hands. But since then, today, a lot of Congolese men, especially in North Kivu, they own guns. They have AK-47s. From as early as the age of 10, young people are told how to disassemble an AK-47, a Kalashnikov, uh, to clean it and oil it and then put it together. You find out of 10 young people in regions like Sake, in regions like Masisi, they, if out of 10, six of them know how to use a gun. They know how to disassemble a gun and clean a gun, repair a gun, and put it together and use it because of Rwanda. Congolese people had no reason to fight. As you can see from these images here, these are images of Masisi. Can you see how beautiful this landscape is? So why would someone from a region like this want to fight? So the land is so vast. There's room for everyone to, you know, do their activities in farming or cattle keeping without disturbing their neighbor. 
as a matter of fact you can walk to a region in masisi you you decide that f- two hills on the left and three hills on the right are yours so you declare about 100 acres as your land and you basically put some landmark there and decide to do farming or cattle keeping and you let everyone else know that that is your land that is your family's ho- ho- uh, land and everyone will agree with you because they will move to the other part of the, the other side of the hills because there are more land in Congo than people so what i'm trying to say is that people never used to fight over resources like land across the border in Rwanda the story was different people were fighting over land killing each other the hutus who are the original owners of the land in Rwanda were being fought by the tutsis the minority who claim that they are kings the amwamis were the owners of that land even though we know that is not possible because if you look at the hutus in rwanda they are the same in burundi and the same ones in tanzania right in kigoma so i'm not talking of goma city but in tanzania near lake tanganyika the region there is called kigoma and the people who live there are hutus they are called the ha but they are hutus basically and how they came to be called the ha and they are about three and a half to four million of them is because the germans who are colonizing tanzania or tanganyika made a mistake so they had this swahili translator who went there and there were two communities there at the moment there is the ones in the south called the bashi and the ones in kigoma near the north near burundi who are the hutus and he asked them who are you and the hutu chief there he tried to explain that we are from here so in kihutu he said uh, turabaha meaning we are of here turabaha and the swahili guy t- tells the german that these are the baha people and the german entered the ha people right so that's how they are called the ha but they actually the hutus and the the name is turabaha meaning we are of here or we are of this place that's what he was trying to explain back then and we have 4 million of them in Tanzania the baha we have the washi we have the bembe in Tanzania on the other side of lake tanganyika in congo we have the bembe there and the frero the hutus i'm giving you all these examples to show you that the hutus are the original inhabitants of that region around lake kivu and around lake tanganyika because both side of these lakes whether it is on the tanzanian side or the congolese side they are there in different communities with different names but the same people the same culture the same language B- the hutus of burundi are no different from the ha they are no different from the hutus of rwanda they are no different from the hutus of burungu or the hutus of kiroridwe they are the same people just ask them they will tell you and then these smaller communities of tutsis they have been trying to rewrite the history and creating wars that are unwinnable and they've been doing it because people are not informed but today with the internet people are more informed and that's why wazarendo and a lot of people are saying that I'm one of them which I am anyway I consider myself a wazarendo of Congo I'm I'm Zarendo from Congo I want the Congolese people to fight this enemy Paul Kagame and kick him out because he's coming to Congo to disrupt peaceful lives of people who have nothing to do with him they have nothing to do with Colton and Rwanda is doing all this because they're also interested in the minerals in Congo and how I know this look at the regions where these M23 or these Rwandan troops keep attacking the town of Kirorirwe which is in the heart of Masisi this town is located a, a few kilometers north of the mines of Rubaya Rubaya is where you have the largest concentration of coltan mines or tantarite mines that Rwanda was stealing from Congo and exporting the last time they exported coltan was the year 2021 and they exported or they made 975 million US dollars from this Colton and that was the year 2021 I'm not the one saying it 
Just go to the Rwandan Development Board website, RDB. They have an article there boasting about how they are the largest exporters of coltan in, in the world, even though we know this coltan was coming from Congo. And guess what happened? In 2022, Congo shut those mines, took control of those mines, and they closed down their border with Rwanda. And that's why Rwanda sent in their troops, in quotes, M23, to try to capture Kichanga and the route to Bunagana, the border town in Uganda to see whether they can get another route to smuggle these minerals through Uganda, then Rwanda. But that is also not working. And then they're inciting the local communities. So they're inciting or arming the local minority Tutsis, telling them that they need to defend themselves from the Hutus. And in return, all communities in Congo that are not Tutsi are retaliating, attacking the Tutsis, and taking away their cows. Tutsis who are living in Congo in peace with their neighbors in Masisi, in Kibumba, in Goma, are now flocking to Rwanda as refugees. And Paul Kagame is using these refugees that he has created as an excuse or an explanation to the Rwandan people. Because the Rwandan people were asking questions as to why every single day they are receiving body bags of their sons killed abroad in a war that they are not aware of. So Paul Kagame now has an excuse to tell them that your sons had gone to Congo to defend Tutsi people there. Even though we know he had sent them there to fight to recapture those minerals or those mines in Rubaya. 